Howdy, 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 everyone. Uh, I first want to start off by apologizing uh, if you hear any sniffles or sneezes or just discomfort moans that I may have. I've been going through a lot of allergies lately, so I'm trying to get through it, but please bear with me. With that being said, we are back again for another rousing edition of Vertical Measures monthly webinar series. Uh, thank you, live listeners, for sacrificing your lunch break to spend some time with us. My name is Zach Jones, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator at Vertical Measures, and I am your intrepid host for today's webinar. Building a social media strategy is like taking care of a child as a first-time parent, presented by Greg Esposito. Uh, we are very excited to have Greg with us today. Greg became the NBA's first full-time social media specialist for the Phoenix Suns in 2011, where he oversaw all of their digital content. Currently, Greg is the head of the social media for the National Academy of Sports Medicine and co-hosts one of my favorite podcasts, The Solar Panel, a Phoenix Sun show. Uh, before I hand it off, I do have two important notes I want to go over. Uh, one of our most asked questions, I've already been asked this a couple times today, uh, is do we offer a recording of this? Of course we do. We will send it out tomorrow to all of our registrants. So if you're listening to this, you are one of them. And we will send an email to you with the slides and the recording. Uh, if you are interested in any of our other webinars or you lose that email and you just want to check up on this later, it's at verticalmeasures.com slash webinars. And uh, I know it was on the form uh, to ask a question to Greg, but if any question pops up you know, in your head during this or if Greg says something you want more, uh, you want him to elaborate on, send that to us in the chat tab or hit us up on Twitter at hashtag VM webinar and we will try to get to it during the Q&A. Uh, if we don't have time though, we will reach out to you afterwards with an answer. So please just ask no matter what and uh, we'll get something out to you. So uh, that's all for me on my end. I am going to pass it off to Greg now. Greg, take it away. So unlike Zach, if you hear any sniffling or uh, or what sounds like crying on my end, it's just because I realize I've been a Suns fan my whole life and have yet to see a championship. So not allergies. That's why, uh, why you hear it on my end. But I really appreciate everybody taking the time to uh, stop by for today's webinar and uh, really excited to present it to you. As Zach mentioned, it is building a social media strategy is like taking care of a child uh, as a first time parent. And I know that's a mouthful, but there is a reason for it. And let me show you why. And uh, for me, that's simply my why. Uh, my wife, Tracy there, and my daughter, Rosalani, uh, she's a little bigger than that now. She's 17 months old. Uh, this was an old photo, but uh, in social media and in life, I'm a big believer in the fact that you have to have a why for everything you do. For me in life, it's uh, these two. And in social media, with your strategy, you have to decide exactly what it is that you want to accomplish with either your campaign or your accounts overall, and use that as kind of your guiding force, your barometer, your beacon in the night, if you will. And for me, uh, people, a lot of people will ask me, okay, well, you were the first social media specialist in the NBA. You, uh, you know, decided to leave. Well, why did you do that? And these are the reasons why. And let me show you, you know, a little bit of my experience. I went to the University of Arizona. So if there's any Sun Devils on the webinar, I do apologize, but I am married to a Sun Devil, so it should be all right. Uh, worked in media for a while uh, after I left school, ran Arizona Sports. Uh, dot com and all their social channels uh, got into the team side in 2011 when uh, who a man who had become a good friend of mine Jeremy McPeak called me up and said look we're looking to hire the very first social media specialist in the NBA I followed what you've done and I really like what you do would you please interview for this job well internally I was a little torn. Uh, I love the Suns, grew up as a Suns fan, but wasn't sure if I really wanted to leave media because my lifelong dream was to to host a radio show. And I was working uh, for a radio station at the time and thought, well, you know, it's 2011. I, I'm not sure uh, where this social media stuff is going, and I'm not sure I want it to be my main focus of my career. Well, thankfully, uh, very thankfully, my wife uh, talked me, uh, helped convince me that uh, heading to the Suns was going to be the best thing for my career and that working in social media made a lot of sense. And uh, here we are, I guess it's uh, eight years later, seven years later now, uh, 
bad math there. Uh, seven years later now, I work uh, fully in social media for my career and uh, had a great five years with the sun started as the social media specialist moved into being the head of all uh, their digital content the the manager of all their digital content and uh, actually had to live out that radio dream as well as uh, being the post-game radio host for the suns but five years uh, into the gig uh, it was 2016 it was uh, march of 2016 and, uh, you know, I mentioned needing a why. Well, m my wife and I were trying to have a kid and trying to figure out what life was going to look like. And I decided 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. days on game days just weren't going to be what I could actually uh, do if I wanted to truly have a family. So I decided it was time to dedicate myself to that. I left the Suns, uh, spent a brief time with a kid's birthday party company as the manager or the director of digital marketing, found my way to the National Academy of Sports Medicine, where I've been for almost a year now running their social. And along the path, uh, obviously my wife had my, uh, had my daughter and I started to realize that, you know, there are a lot, a lot of similarities in terms of raising that child as a first time parent and what I was going through, not only what I had been through in developing social strategies for uh, the Arizona sports and the Suns, And then uh, when you look at it uh, now with the national Academy of sports medicine and going through having to learn a complete new industry, I wasn't very familiar with sports medicine, but figuring out how to apply what I had learned they in sports to social in a different industry. And there's a lot of universal truths in this. And the thing that's funny to me is with both parenthood and social media, you wind up, you know, with parenthood, you welcome this basically alien into your house, this, this being that you had never known before. They can't sleep. They can't feed themselves. They can't do anything for themselves. And yet now they're your permanent house guest. And you have to figure out, how do I help this person? How do I raise this person? How do I uh, make sure that no harm happens to this person? And social media winds up surprisingly being a lot like that. You welcome a complete stranger into your quote unquote digital home and you wind up having to figure out, okay, well, how do I best help this person? How do I I uh, make sure that their needs are met. How do I make sure that what I'm providing is what they're looking for and make sure that I actually take care of them throughout this? So while it may sound like it, it's not a, a lot of like at first thought, it really wound up being uh, a process that I had to go through with the National Academy of Sports Medicine's uh, social media accounts, the Suns when I started there, trying to figure out how to raise these accounts. And I'm going through the same process with my daughter. So I kind of have six rules that I'm going to go through that uh, kind of align between both what I'm going through as a first time parent and what I've gone through in terms of being a, a social media manager and figuring out that first rule. And uh, it's a big one is you have to understand both uh, each child that that's out there and each social media platform and and a, a, and company that you're running accounts for are unique they're different no one is exactly alike they're even even twins are different and even if you're running two uh, two accounts for the same company that are for different divisions even they're different and what you have to do is different so you know whether it's a baby or social media account you have to accept the fact that no two are going to be alike at any point and no matter how many times you've seen it before each is different and the way you handle and approach them should be different too uh and no one size uh, approach is going to fit uh, all social media accounts and you'll hear a lot of gurus or, or quote unquote experts try to tell you that I have a one size fits all system. I have all the answers to raise your child or build your social media account and it'll be successful no matter what. It'll it'll 100% of the time will work for you uh, out of the box. And it's just not the truth. People can tell you that. They can tell you they have it all figured out. And maybe they do for, for what they're doing. 
Maybe they do have it figured out from what they're managing, but there is no one size fits all solution. I wish there was because whoever would come up with it would get pretty rich on either side of things, whether it's kids or social media, but there just isn't that solution. You have to learn the ins and outs. You have to spend time with each and, and understand what makes them tick. What do what do your customers, your fan base, like I dealt with in the NBA, what makes them tick? And uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, with the Phoenix Suns, it was, you know, quite frankly, pretty easy to get engagement. You'd throw a topic out there, even if you simply were just putting a press release out, and you'd instantly get 50, 75, 100 comments because – in sports, there's a reason that fan is short for fanatical. These people very much are passionate about their team. And so you could use methods that were pretty simplistic. Now, I got to the National Academy of Sports Medicine, and uh, these aren't small accounts that, uh, that I'm handling. It's 570,000 uh, likes on Facebook, 70-some-odd thousand uh follows on Instagram, they're sizable accounts. But when you got, when I got there and I tried a few of those uh, easier tactics that worked on the sun side, they didn't apply with, with NASM because it's not, it's not as fanatical of a group uh, in sports. It's real easy, but in the end, you're, it's still a brand. It's still a brand that you're managing. And what you need to figure out is how to try to turn people into fans of your brand on social. It's about finding that content, excuse me, finding that content that resonates with that group, understanding what they want, understanding that it's different than other accounts you may have run. And I wound up learning, it was very much about the science-based uh, things and, and challenging their understandings as uh, as trainers when for the National Academy of sports medicine, where with the Suns, it was simply just throwing at a topic. You have to understand that they're different, and you have to understand that just because you've had success somewhere or just because one thing worked once on your social media account doesn't mean it's going to work again, or it doesn't mean if it works on Facebook that it's then again going to work on uh, on Instagram or on Twitter. You have to understand that each are very different and determine a plan that works on both sides or on uh, works across the board uh, for you. So the next rule, you have to nurture them. I mean, this seems like a pretty easy rule. I mean, especially in raising a kid, you're not going to just not uh, provide uh, that the basic needs for for a child, but you know you're not given a manual when your kid's born. You're not when you take over a social media account. And as a parent, you have to learn kind of the best ways to do things, the best way to feed your child, the best way to change your child, the best way to interact with your child, uh, what their sleep preferences are. I, they they come out, and you wouldn't think they have uh, personalities in these things already, but they very much do. And if you're taking over a social account, or even if you're just starting from scratch, uh, it, your, your following is going to be the same way. You have to nurture it. You have to take care of it constantly. Uh, and it, there's not going to be, just like when I left the hospital with my daughter, uh, after a couple days in the NICU, you know, you have all these people fawning over you, helping you, asking, oh, is she doing all right? Here's how you do this. Then you get home. There's nobody there. There's no experts with you. You're on your own. And that's how you are with your social media accounts is, you know, you may be able to get help from time to time. Uh, you may hire somebody that overlooks it. But really, there's no manual. There's nothing uh, there uh, to to help you. You have to nurture it. You have to understand it. You have to take the time to post on there, to respond to people that are posting, to be constantly monitoring and making sure that uh, you know th if there are questions, you're taking care of that. You're thinking about creative content that your accounts need, that your that your followers will find interesting. You can't just uh, have social media and hope that just by being there, it's going to be okay. That just by being there is enough. It's not. And I'll actually 
tell some people, if you don't have that why, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a, a, a thought out reason and content behind being on social media, maybe it's not worth it for you to be there because sometimes just being there and doing nothing does more damage to your brand than actually uh, not being there at all. And I know uh, that's not to say you shouldn't uh, claim your social media handles for your company. You always should, but don't just go into social media and uh, not put forth a good effort, not nurture that, uh, that fan base, because these are people that if they're looking for your company, they're fans of, or potential fans of what you're doing. And you need to take the time to really uh, help them learn about what uh, what it is you do and and what you're trying to accomplish on social. So take the time, learn about your your customer. You wouldn't go into building a product or uh, any industry that you're in without understanding what your customers are and how to uh, actually take care of their needs. And you need to do that on social media as well, because if you don't nurture them, if you don't learn those things, it's going to hurt you in the long run. So the next one, and this is one of my favorite uh, tips that both uh, applies to being a parent and being a social media manager is, uh, and it ties into the last one, constant attention. All right. When you have a newborn and a tod and they grow into a toddler, if you turn your back on them for even a second, you will have a complete and utter mess on your hands. One that catches you completely off guard. And this is a photo of my daughter. Uh, I was left in uh, daddy duty, right? My wife uh, went out to, to go enjoy herself or, or well-earned time to herself. And my daughter, uh, we've taught her sign language and it was part of the nurturing. We had to understand what she needed. So we taught her sign language so she could uh, communicate with us. And she has a sign for paint. Well, she gave me that sign and I thought, great, we can paint. It's, you know, it'll take, it'll fill some time. We can have some fun with it. She loves doing it. Uh, I'll get the paints out. We'll go up back and, and we'll be good to go. So I literally, for a, probably 30 seconds, look down at my phone because work had sent me an email. And I look back up and my daughter had found a way to paint herself completely with all of her white paint, all of her shirt, all of her hands, all of her legs. Now it was washable paint. It wasn't a huge deal. It was somewhat entertaining to me because I had noticed that she had also, uh, at one point painted my jeans uh, and uh, created an abstract piece of art on my jeans as well. Uh, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to social media, if you ignore something or you do not pay the proper attention when something is going on, that mess is not going to be as cleanable as washable paint. You will have a PR and a brand nightmare on your hands that could directly impact your sales, uh, your company's good standing in the community, whatever the case may be. If you are not paying constant attention to your accounts, you could have a major issue. It could be something as small as you lose a customer because you weren't paying attention when they had an issue that you could easily rectify and you didn't respond for a day, for weeks, whatever the case may be, and you lose that co customer. There are serious consequences if you don't pay constant attention to your social media accounts. I'll give you an example, and this is, I'll admit, it's an extreme example. But when I was working for the Phoenix Suns, it was, uh, I think it was the anniversary of 9 11 on two th in 2013 or 14. I don't remember the exact date, but I was asked to post on social media a, a simple message uh, about, uh, you know, 9-11 and, and just remembering it. Uh, obviously a sensitive subject. So I got six images. I went and I asked uh, my higher ups, a bunch of people, which image should we use? They settled on an image of the Phoenix Suns gorilla uh, from a military appreciation night. Uh, I thought, okay, uh, it's, it's a photo that everybody wants to use. We'll go with it. Simple messaging, hashtag never forget. And I had to go to a meeting for an hour and a half. It was a pretty big uh, marketing planning meeting that I had to attend. 
Uh, didn't think much about it. In that hour and a half while I was gone, uh, some people took issue with the imagery and it caused a very big deal. Uh, it put us in a very big uh, position where we had to uh, do some cleanup. Uh, we wound up on ESPN, uh, on Keith Oberman's show at the time, where he had uh, kind of took us to task. Luckily, we weren't the most egregious. Uh, we had a very small misstep, but there were a lot of teams that uh, made some larger missteps and, and were taken to task. And it was one of those things that, A, uh, probably didn't understand our audience well enough to understand uh, how they'd react, which was, uh, you know, part of the nurture phase. And then also, if you're going to post something that you think may create response, good or bad, that you're going to need to respond to, you shouldn't leave the wheel for an hour or, or two. I was, uh, I was uh, new, newer, and it was a lesson that I learned very quickly. And just like I can't leave my daughter with paints for 30 seconds because I'm going to wind up seeing, you know, uh, somebody that's covered in white paint after that, or uh, she's done it with green and looks like the Incredible Hulk with peas at the dinner table. Uh, if you're not paying attention, you will have a mess. Now, luckily, that did not hurt the sons. I, I did not hurt. Uh, my career in the long run, but it was one of those things that made it very abundantly clear to me that if you're not paying enough attention, if you're not taking care of things on a constant basis, you will wind up with a problem. Uh, on the opposite side, working for the National Academy of Sports Medicine, uh, I was able to catch a handful of customer issues that were uh, pretty angry customers, but were easily fixable. And I've been empowered to help fix those issues by, by management because they understand this. And since I was, uh, I am constantly paying attention to that during business hours and have somebody who, who is monitoring our accounts uh, in off peak hours, we're able to catch those, rectify the situation and turn a negative into a positive and create a lifelong customer because we've been willing to help fix their issue in a timely manner. So please, when with your social media accounts, constantly be monitoring. If you don't have time to, find somebody that does. Find somebody in your organization that can uh, or hire somebody that can because you want to be able to take care of your customers. And more and more, people are turning to social media as their first step in trying to get a correction for an issue that they're having or get questions answered, whatever the case may be more and more customers are turning to social. And if you're not paying attention, it's just like not having somebody manning your phones in the office or having a, an, a contact us email that literally goes to nobody. You wouldn't do that. It's bad business. And you can't do it on social media either because it's quickly becoming the, uh, the communication tool of choice, especially with the younger demographic. So if you want to continue to grow your customer base, your fan base, your brand with people uh, in the younger demo, you're going to have to treat this as a key channel for you to communicate and, and for customer service issues as well. So the next thing for me, and this is a, another big one, is you have to take the time to experiment and figure out what works for you uh, and for your followers. And as a first-time parent, this was this was another one that nobody really tells you. No, you, you just think, oh, it'll come natural. Everybody says, oh, you'll have a kid. You'll 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 be a natural at it. You'll figure it out. They don't tell you. It takes a heck of a lot of experimentation to actually figure it out. Now, I'm not I'm not talking anything uh, you know weird experimentation. I'm just talking about working with them to uh, your your kid and your social media accounts to figure out what what's the preference. You know, sometimes I, I like to joke desperate times to call for desperate measures. Uh, but all the time, it calls for experimentation. You know, it's sometimes uh, your your child will be losing their mind, and you just have to give them uh, the movie that they love because it's soothing to them, or uh, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you have to do that in social media. And then, you know what I've learned is, uh, you you have to try to try content on different channels. Uh, learn what will work. You have to accept that sometimes what you do will not work on social media the first time. 
and you have to try it a second, a third time. In a world of algorithms that are determining what people see, sometimes it's not that what you're doing isn't it isn't good. It's sometimes that the algorithm didn't like it at the particular time you posted, uh, the particular day you posted. Uh, so mix up the content. Try a different time of day. Try a different day if it's a specific kind of content. Experiment to figure out what what works with your your group there, and and work on that. Look at that. Understand it. You can't just simply post it and go, oh well, I have five minutes. I'm just going to throw this up here, and I'm not going to consider what time or what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's schedule things out. That is the best tool that you will have in social media. Use a tweet deck. Use the scheduling tool in Facebook natively. Use something like Hootsuite. There are a bunch of products out there that you can schedule what you're doing. So you can experiment with time and day and you don't have to be there in the moment to actually post. You can think it out and try it. And with your content itself, don't always just post a link. Don't always just post an image. Uh, don't always just post a video. Mix things up. Try different things. Experiment with different things. Uh, try. Uh, I'm a big fan right now of Instagram stories. Now, uh, obviously, Facebook's uh, algorithm uh, has been in the news and the uh, way that people are seeing things and the comments about how traffic is down on uh, referral traffic from Facebook is down uh, have, have all been very well documented. And at NASM, we were losing traffic to our blog, which is a key part of our social strategy, uh, is using these social channels to drive traffic to blogs, to drive leads to uh, to our product. Well, I noticed that I had lost probably 35 40% of uh, my referral traffic from Facebook as they're messing with the algorithm in the last six months. Uh, and I decided, okay, well, we need to try to experiment. We need to find new channels that maybe can make up for this deficit. And we had used Instagram stories for a handful of things, but hadn't really looked at it as a potential way to drive traffic. Uh, what I learned uh, as I began to experiment with it and try different ways uh, to present that uh, present that content was if I simply posted a, an image but didn't make it clear that they could swipe up to get the story, not a lot of interaction there. Once I experimented and added a secondary slide that said swipe up to learn more or something like that, all of a sudden, my referral traffic from Instagram stories was almost as high as what I was getting from Facebook. I had made up the deficit that I had lost from Facebook, and it actually had started to increase our social media traffic to our blog. And if I hadn't thought it was time to experiment with something different, try a different form and format, and try a different type of content, we never would have regained that traffic. We would have put up our hands in the air and said, well, it's Facebook's algorithm. We're not going to wind up recouping that traffic. So be it. Well, if you do that enough, I'm probably not going to be in a job. Neither of my bosses in digital marketing. So you have to experiment. Uh, I try all sorts of different content. And the beauty of, uh, of a digital platform or a social media platform in particular is, okay, if so something doesn't work, you're a delete button away or you know a few days away from people not even remembering that it was ever there it's not like a magazine it's not uh, television it's not a hard cost that it, that you're putting into it usually other than time since it's all digital so experiment as much as you can try different things and then know that over time you will start to see diminishing returns on certain things and it's time to experiment again and try something new uh, again not a one there's no one size fits all so you got to constantly be innovating and and being creative with it i wish this were a simple set it and forget it platform on all these channels that you could uh, could do that and never have to worry about it but the thing is uh, like i said you got to nurture it, and if you're not experimenting, you're going to wind up uh, not getting getting returns that, that you want. Next, be entertaining. Now, this means different things for different businesses. In the MBA, it was real easy. I could be funny. Now, if uh, for anybody that's ever followed me on Twitter, listen to a podcast, know anything about what I do, 
I tend to be a somewhat sarcastic person. I like to joke about things. And, and that personality actually worked really well in NBA Twitter when I started. Uh, we were a bunch of young kids uh, having fun, and we would go back and forth from team accounts and, and be entertaining uh, and joke around and do hashtag games like uh, you know NBA vegetables, where it was Gerald Green Bean, you know, things like that. Now, I realize that that doesn't work for all different uh, different mediums. It doesn't work for all different companies. And in sports, and I would tell people that you're not the play-by-play guy. You're the color commentator. You have to be unique. You have to be different. You have to be entertaining. And you you may be sitting there thinking, well, I run I run a company that uh, you know creates widgets, and there's just nothing entertaining or fun about what I do, and it's just got to be straight laced. And when I say be entertaining, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be sarcastic. It doesn't mean that you have to use memes, and it doesn't mean that. But you have to find out what's entertaining to the group that you work with. What do they want? And you have to do it with a with a kid too. You have to find out, you know, what's the easiest way for me to get a laugh out of my child, to make them feel comfortable and be entertained in that. And sometimes it's acting completely goofy. Sometimes it's a simple pat on the back and telling them that you love them and, and they're entertained by that and they're comforted by that. You have to find out what works with uh, with your your group. And you know, I a social equivalent. Uh, of that inner that reaction from your child is it kind of that share that tweet that that retweet that like uh, and you have to find a way to entertain your audience whatever your audience is interested in find a way to tap into that like i said on the sons uh, you you talk about the past and the charles barkley's the steve nash's you joke around with other teams you use memes you'd use funny gifts you do all these things with the national academy of sports medicine it's very serious it's very much about expertise and the scientific side of things and so i had to understand these accounts and then figure out what's entertaining to those that follow them so now i do things that are pop quizzes about uh different terminology in sports medicine now if i had done that on the sun's account i probably would have people looking at me like i was nuts and that they weren't entertained at all because that's just not what they're interested in uh it's just not their kind of thing but with this group and with this audience that's entertaining that's what they find interesting and funny. Uh, when I worked in the uh, kids' birthday party space, what they found entertaining was, uh, you know, at the time, those BuzzFeed tasty videos of people making things uh, were entertainment to them. So what we did is we took something on Pinterest and understanding the frustration of uh, how when you see something on Pinterest, it looks real easy. It's five simple steps and it turns out looking great. Well, we saw this thing where you could take a peep, you know, those uh, bunnies that are basically are marshmallows and sugar and turn it into a Pikachu. Well, this was in the middle of the Pokemon Go craze. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to try to recreate one of those kind of tasty videos because we know that's kind of what's, uh, what's in vogue. But I know I'm going to fail horribly at this because I'm not an artist. I'm not a mother. I'm not a Pinterest person. I'm going, this is going to look awful. So let's have fun with it. Let's make fun of it and make it very clear that it's not that simple to do things with Pinterest, but it's simple to, to schedule a birthday party with, with the company that I was at. That was entertaining to that demographic that performed extremely well. But again, if I did something like that on the national Academy of sports medicine side, it would fall on deaf ears because that's not their personality. You have to understand the personality of your accounts. Like you have to understand the personality of your child and really play up to it, figure it out and find out how you can be entertaining to your group. That is key. And then the sixth thing that you have to do, that is something you have to do when it comes to being a parent and something you're going to have to do uh, running social media accounts for your company is you're going to have to take it in for a checkup. I never know. Another thing, nobody tells you how many times you wind up in a doctor's office to make sure that your child's okay, whether it's a regular checkup, whether uh, they seem sick and you go in, uh, whether they have to get 
boost your shots. These are all things that you're going to have to do with your kid. And you should be doing the same kind of thing with your social media accounts on a regular basis. You should be taking the time to give it a checkup, understanding what's working. Look at what your engagement is, your reach, the traffic to your website, what your follower increase is, uh, determining what the key performance indicators for your business are and your plan on social. You go back to that why. I told you it would be your guiding light. If your why is you want to drive leads to your uh, to your company through social, then you have to align your content with that and then go back and follow up by looking at the key metrics that you've determined uh, and understand is what I'm doing working. I do it on a weekly basis, uh, sometimes even a daily basis to understand how my tactics are working and how they're leading back to those KPIs that I've determined for my business. Uh, some people will do it monthly, but if you're not looking at it at all, you can't adjust your strategy. Uh, and if I'm not paying attention to my daughter's health, I'm not going to be able to help her if something's wrong. That's what you got to do with your accounts. And there could be something wrong with your approach. There could be something wrong with what you're trying to accomplish. If you have a why of leading, of creating leads to your website or to your company, uh, and they're not for some reason happening, well, maybe what the page you're driving them to from social media isn't one that's optimized to convert. Uh, maybe your posts aren't uh, interesting enough or uh, well-crafted enough to drive them to the page to make them want to convert as leads. You have to understand the health of what you're doing to understand what you have to change, the, the things you have to work on from your strategy. For us, uh, for me, a key uh, strategy or key uh, performance indicators that I look at is comments per post. I do everything per post when it comes to social media because if you don't and you're looking at it uh, on a weekly, monthly, whatever your time frame is basis, my numbers could increase simply because I've posted more. And some, some companies, some social media managers will do that. They'll falsely inflate their KPIs by just simply posting more and not actually uh, normalizing what that data looks like. So I do it on a per post basis and I look at uh, the number of comments, the number of interactions, the number of link clicks that are driven per post on things. Uh, I look at follower increase. That's always uh, an important thing. And I also look at engagement rate as well. And then for us, it's about driving that traffic to our website. So I look at it and I go, all right, based on the post, how many link clicks do I have? What percentage of my traffic to our blog has been in has been driven by our social media? And has that increased or decreased uh, over over the month that I look at or month or week, whatever the, the time frame is, has that increased per the number of posts that I've sent? It is very, very important to determine what those KPIs are and follow them very, very closely to understand the health of what you have going on and, and making adjustments based on that data because a, a, you it's real easy to just sit there and go, yeah, 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 it's working. There's stuff going on, social media, great. But using the data can actually become a very powerful tool to help you learn how you can drive uh, whatever your, your key performance indicators are, whatever your why is to achieving that. So highly recommend constantly giving your accounts checkups. So that is my six uh, reasons why parenting and managing a social media account are very much alike. Uh, I am available in many different platforms. You can always tweet me at Espo. You can always give me a call. Uh, the number there on the screen for it, 0331 You can read some of what uh, what I write about social media. It, the, this current, uh, current writing is more geared towards a sports audience, but it's always thought of with kernels of truth for anybody that manages a social media presence. And it also shows you some uh, great examples of 
what people are doing out there. You can find that at gregesposito.com. And you can always give me an email uh, if you have questions or uh, need anything, gregory.esposito at gmail.com. So always happy to interact and talk with you. Uh, as you can tell by that photo, I'm usually glued to my phone, much to the dismay of uh, of certain people in my life. But I am usually around to interact and happy to do it. So uh, that is the presentation. Now it's uh, time for Q and A's. And no, I am not dressed like Russell Westbrook in a shirt like that, but I am wearing glasses, and I am happy to take whatever questions you have right now. Greg, that was awesome. That was a really good presentation. It, it spoke to us too because we are. Uh, you know, in digital marketing, it's not really that exciting of a field. So we have to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, in an industry that doesn't get a lot of interaction uh, on social. So that, that was really helpful for me and I'm sure the people listening. Um, so we're going to jump into Q&A and we're going to combine uh, a few questions that we got just because uh, they were all pretty similar. It was Polly, Elizabeth, William, Keela, and Shannon all kind of asked a question. Um, uh, they're wondering how a social strategy might change if your audience doesn't consist of like sports fanatics or engaged followers. Um, what if your company isn't considered sexy and focuses more on B two C? Um, and how do you effectively use social platforms to generate uh, the best ROI? Well, sorry, that's a long question. <laughs> I'll do my best. I, I'm I'm used to it after. Uh... Uh, some of the podcasts I do, some of the guys I do podcasts with have some meandering questions, so it's all right. I, there's a lot there. We'll um, we'll unpack it together. I promise. Uh, you know, honestly, I get it. A lot of industries aren't sexy, and quite frankly, the one I'm working in right now isn't one of those. Uh, a personal trainer certification isn't something that jumps off the page and and leads you to believe that it's going to be. Uh, easy to gain interaction and it's not and you you have to set realistic expectations with what you're doing and understand that the post that has 3,000 likes and and 50,000 shares may not be what you're in it for but if you get one or two meaningful conversations out of a post if you prove your expertise in a field when somebody's researching what they're looking for whatever your industry may be that's value and you have to understand what you're trying to accomplish and find that value and like i mentioned you know not everything has to be overwhelmingly you know to, to use the term in the question, sexy, it has to speak to your customer base, your brand following. What are they following you for? What do you offer that nobody else offers? How can you showcase that effectively on your social media accounts? You have to determine that. And just because somebody else is doing it uh, and, and just because there's a certain trend doesn't mean you have to do it. You don't have to follow the Joneses in social media. You have to be true to what your company values are and what uh, your customer values are, what they believe in and what they're looking for from you. And quite frankly, uh, growth, there's no hack to make this super easy. Uh, some people buy followers and it's the worst mistake you can make that does not help you. It's a vanity metric that isn't, isn't going to help you. I'd much rather have a very small but dedicated tribe of people that want to hear what my brand has to say than a very large apathetic group who never interacts and doesn't care what, what we have to share. Uh, building, building that uh, group and why they should care about your brand is what social media is about. It, it's. I know a lot of people want to think of it as, well, it's a sales tool. And it's kind of a sales tool. It's kind of a marketing tool. It's kind of a customer service tool. It's kind of a customer complaint tool. It's all those things. Uh, my, my job may be uh, housed in the marketing department where I work, but I work just as much with our customer service department our member services department that deals with with people that are already enrolled, uh, with our sales group. Uh, there's a, a bunch of groups that every aspect of it I touch with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, I worked with Arena Security on game nights when there were fan complaints. I worked with Arena Management when there were issues in the building. Uh, I worked with our ticket sales group when there were questions about that. You Your social media is a the most forward-facing 
easy platform to get in touch with your brand. So you have to you have to keep that in mind when when you're going through this too. And one thing I didn't mention in the presentation, but it's extremely important is since social media in the past, uh, media and, and the ways we got in touch with people was dictation. It wasn't discussion. Social media is discussion. And it may be tempting to put the intern that doesn't understand your brand on their managing it, but that's like in the past, would you have put the intern on television for a television hit to explain what your brand is or if you had a crisis to talk people through it? No, you wouldn't have. And social media is like that, but can spread a lot faster than a, than a local television hit could. So just keep all that in mind when you're looking at it and understand, well, you may not get the big likes, you may not get the big shares. It's a very important part of your business and and working on it okay we're gonna narrow it down a little bit more just to instagram and leslie uh leslie asked a few questions so we'll get to all of them um what do you use to tra uh, track traffic from instagram stories on uh to your blog uh something other than google analytics and what kpis do you suggest focusing on and why uh, so the first part of the question, no, we use Google Analytics and we use specific UTM codes and parameters to follow uh, where the traffic comes from. So we'll look at look at that and we can actually track back direct traffic from, uh, I have tags for Instagram stories, regular Instagram where you do a click the link in the bio to learn more, Facebook, Twitter. I use UTM parameters for all those things so you can understand specifically where it's coming from so you can look at source medium uh the content tag and and understand okay so this traffic came from social media it was from instagram stories and it was a link to uh, this specific blog post whatever the the tag is utm coding is a huge thing i didn't fully understand it my first few years with the suns and i thought my uh my analytics guy was just being a pain in my butt saying hey you need to add all this extra stuff to the end of the link anytime you send something out i'm like yeah 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 but it, it has become one of the most valuable tools i use uh, in in social media now is so you can understand everything uh zach i apologize what was the uh, second portion of that question yeah what kpis do you uh suggest focusing on and why instagram specific uh i would yeah, look I would, at yeah. yeah so i would look at uh obviously traffic back to uh the blog if that's uh where you're sending them or whatever page you may be sending them to understanding is it actually driving any traffic is this content interesting is that what i'm uh uh, you know, am I accomplishing what my goal is? Uh, I also look at, uh, well, it's not the end all be all. I look at what I call vanity metrics like likes and uh, and comments to understand is this generating engagement? Because in social media, in the world of algorithms, if you're not in, uh, creating engagement, fewer and fewer people will see what you're posting. So uh, those are those are kind of the key KPIs when it comes to Instagram. I look at there's a, the, the analytics are getting a little bit more robust in terms of, uh, of Instagram, but it's still kind of uh, those are what you can look at. You can also look at obviously uh, follower increases, but what you have to do is you have to keep a log of it yourself. Uh, whatever your time period is for your KPI reporting and just manually keep track of that as well. Okay. And this, this one's also from Leslie, but I think this kind of applies more to all of social media. And you, you spoke a lot to experimenting and she asked, how long do you let an experiment go before you decide whether it's effective? I usually will try two or three times with it. Uh, if it falls on deaf ears and you're not seeing any growth with it after uh, two or three times of trying it, it's usually a pretty good sign that it's not actually going to be an effective uh, tool or method for for you. So I usually go with that rule. If I start to see incremental increases with uh, with it each time, uh, I may I, I'll probably play it out for a month, two months, and see if I continue to see those those increases. But if it's just not working after two or three times, it's probably not going to work. If you've changed the, the time of day and those kind of things, maybe even the day you're posting it, uh, if it's just not working, uh, then after a couple of times, I, I usually pull the plug. 
Okay, kind of even a more broad uh, look into that as far as like changing your approach. Uh, this one's from John. How does face? How does a Facebook post uh, need to be different than a LinkedIn post? And both of those from Twitter. And it, it basically, what advice do you have for the, the three main channels on like writing, tone, content, and to make it the most effective? Well, uh, that goes in part goes back to the experimentation. You have to understand what on each channel your uh, your audience is looking for, and they do a very different styles. But when it comes to some universal rules, uh, LinkedIn obviously much more professional than uh, than you have to be in a Twitter or even a Facebook or Instagram. Uh, those are it's a different kind of person that's following your business. So I usually keep that very professional. It's it's things that, that pertain specifically to the business of uh, the industry I'm in, or specifically the business that. I'm doing uh, jobs that I'm posting, those kind of things are, are what are good for Instagram. Twitter uh, is a medium where you can post more frequently. In fact, it's encouraged uh, to post more often. Uh, it's sometimes a lesser uh, formalized thing. Obviously, you have fewer characters than other platforms. You also, uh, it's, it's a more informal discussion. Uh, responding quickly on Twitter is extremely important. It's instant communication. So uh, I try to do that. Uh, I look at it uh, more. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, this is, it's a platform that's more forgiving if, if you post uh, press releases from time to time and, and you do it in a uh, somewhat a witty way or uh, posting it there uh, it's more forgiving and then Facebook that's that's the tough one the algorithm is is one that is uh, very difficult to crack it's changing constantly uh, simply posting a link isn't always the best method you have to mix in uh, graphics that you've created uh, videos I constantly change the type of uh, of content that I'm posting in terms of just the the actual type, whether it's video, a link, or a, a image that I'm posting on Facebook, because I've noticed it actually will impact the reach of your post. If I post too many photos all the time, I start to see diminishing return. If I post just simply links too often, I see diminishing return. But when I mix in a video or a Facebook Live video, then all of a sudden, uh, those start to get more interaction. So I try to mix it up in that way on Facebook in particular. Okay. Um, we got one more question. I just want to say there we had a ton of questions come in during this webinar and before. So I just want to reiterate that we will reach out to all of you personally after, afterwards. So if we didn't get to your question, we apologize. We just, we had a ton of questions. Um, but we're going to do this last one from Britt. And it's how do we turn employees into social media brand evangelist without investing in software like Social Toaster? You know, honestly, the the very simple method that I've employed in everywhere I've been is simply emailing employees when there's interesting content and saying, hey, uh, it, it, whether it's an employee newsletter where it's here's interesting things going on and we encourage you to share them or uh, specific emails about we posted this on Facebook and we'd very much appreciate uh, you sharing this information uh, with your with your followings if you're comfortable. I've found that's the most effective way. Uh, you know that way uh, you're not paying any third party necessarily to manage all this, and uh, you know it's it's easy. It's hitting somebody's inbox, and then they decide if they're going to do it. Monitoring it's a little tougher that way, but uh, I don't think forcing employees to be brand advocates on social is it is a good way to go about it anyways if they're naturally going to want to share what you're talking about and you're just simply putting it in front of them so it's easily done for them that's your best bet so that's honestly the way i've always always handled it and that's not to look down uh, my nose on any of those uh, platforms that, that that people offer uh, pay solutions but to me i've just found that the the email to to employees is is the most effective way 
that that's what we do internally when we have new piece of content we send out a, an email with lazy tweets in them so it's easy for someone <laughs> to copy it with the link paste it into social and that's all they have to do and it it seems to be pretty effective we even offer a uh, a little internal, you know, fun thing for them, you know, and, and it, it gets a lot of engagement. So that I, I, I totally agree with your, uh, your answer there. Um, okay. Well, that is all the time we have today. Uh, I want to personally thank Greg. Thank you for coming on. This was really great. We got a lot of interaction on this one. So it was a really fun webinar for us. Um, next month's webinar will be on five seventeen, and our presenters will be Jen Tanabi and Dana Kachakevich. I, she's going to butcher. She's going to be so mad at me that I probably said her name wrong there. Uh, and they'll be presenting how to streamline your marketing process to generate the biggest results. Uh, registration will be open uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, just follow us on social and you'll be able to find it. Uh, speaking of that, follow us on Twitter at Vertical Measure. There's no S. Uh, and you can get up-to-date information on our future webinars, our blog posts, our eBooks, and all of our community service. It's really fun. We, we have a fun Twitter uh, I do want to remind everyone or tell everyone that when you close out of this webinar, you'll get a quick survey. It's three questions, really fast. Just answer them. Uh, it's it's super easy, uh, and uh, we'd really appreciate it. So until next time, uh, I'm Zach, and from all of us at Vertical Measures, thank you for attending, and have a great day. Thanks again, Greg.